Hey everybody, Coach Brandon here. Today I'm here with Zach, and he's going to help me teach you guys about the countering the split squat, or negating the split squat. Um, the week four topic for November. First, what is a split squat, and why do we have to learn to negate it? When Zach's on his back, head toward the camera, please. Right here. Okay, if I stay right here in front of Zach, we've seen there's a number of things he can do to me. He can work inside position, going in Pajan Rami, and X guard, etc. He can work outside position, working daily Hilo. He can also entangle my upper body with things like spider guard and collar cuff bicep. So it's not very good for me to stay right in front of Zach here. The split squat is something that I'm going to use a staging position for my guard passes, where I'm going to split Zach's legs, squat over one of his legs, and this is going to be our split squat. Okay? I'm squatted over just one of Zach's legs, so that's the squat portion, and then the split portion actually has two parts. One is that I'm splitting Zach's legs with my leg, and two is that my legs are also split, where I have one leg in tight and close to me, and the other leg stretched out for stability. Now the beauty of the split squat position is that if I do a good job of connecting my right elbow and right knee, and I keep this space um, in my torso, closed, Zach can't really get that leg to the inside position. Now, if Zach wants to work the Akiva, he can't. If he wants to work Ajahn or X-Guard, he can't. I have one foot inside. If he goes Spider-Guard or Collar Cup Bicep, he really can't do anything right here. This shuts down most of his attacks and leaves me with some great guard pass options. So, you can realistically expect that any of your partners who are, you know, blue belts or higher, or even, you know, maybe um, late into their white belt, they're going to be trying to use the split squat position to pass your guard. And you're going to have to know what to do to do in that position. First, let's talk about the notion of offensive and defensive cycles. Because it's very important that you understand the notion of offensive and defensive cycles as it relates to the split squat. Okay? Zach's down again. In a situation like this, right, um, understand that this is kind of a neutral position, but within this neutral position there are some elements that are going to make it either better for me or better for him. Where either I can be offensive or where he can be offensive. Zach wants a situation where he has four points of connection to me. So say for instance a daily heat recovery. He's got one point of connection, two, and then he's had a grip somewhere, three and four. These points of connection mean that when I go to get an angle on Zach to pass his guard, I won't be able to. Furthermore, Zach can use these points of connection to take me out of balance and now I'm getting tossed all over the place, okay? So Zach wants to create four points of connection, and that's when he can be offensive and I have to be defensive. If go he goes into four points of connection, again, this, in this situation, the first thing I should do is start to deal with his points of connection. Maybe break a grip here, jump a foot, pop the daily heave hook off, and now this was the only connection he had left. And now from here, now I can start coming in and setting up my guard passing position. If Zach does not have points of connection to me, so right now we have, nobody has any connections, I'd say that this position slightly favors me because I'm more mobile. So I would consider myself to be offensive, and I would consider Zach to be defensive in this scenario. Zach needs to be ready for my fast guard pass attempts. Okay? Now where things really start to get interesting is when I start to get close to the pocket of Zach's head. Put your head on the mat if you would. This point right here, let's rotate. The pocket of his hip, right here, when I start getting to the point of the hip, either his left hip here or his right hip over here, when I start encroaching on and getting close to that point, Zach is 100% defensive. Okay? My thing is that I want to get inside the knees, control the hips, and control the pockets of both hips. Now if Zach tries to put me back in guard, it's not going to be easy. Okay? So in the case of the split squat, my knee is looking to attack the pocket of this hip. So now that I'm getting close to the pocket of his hip, I'm starting to get close to passing the legs, and Zach should really take a defensive mindset here. So that's what the split squat is. So understand that when your partner forces the split squat position, you've got to switch your mindset from an offensive mindset to a defensive mindset. 
So we've got a number of different ways we can be defensive. We've got a number of different defensive tools. And I'm going to show you guys what those are. And then once I show you guys what the defensive tools are, then we're going to get into our attacks. Your first job, when your partner comes in and they start threatening with that split squat position, your first job is to throw up defensive tools. Let's start looking at a number of them, okay? So, in a situation where Zach is going to come in and start to force the split squat, your first thing from here is going to be to frame. Right now, he's jumped this leg. If I want to use this leg to push him away, I really can't, okay? Especially if he's a little more forward here, and I can't get this foot to the inside. If he's backing away with this leg, I might be able to get my foot to the thigh, push him away, okay? But he's going to do a good job of staying over that leg, so I can't use that leg to push. He's going to keep his elbow and knee tight together here, so when I go to push with my left leg and I go to push him off, I can't. Okay, with either leg. So it's very important you guys understand. You are defensive here. Your legs are more or less shut out, and you're going to have to start putting up frames. That's your first defensive tool. Is that as Zach comes into the split squat, he's out. As he comes in, I have to recognize that he's coming into the split squat, and I need to put up defensive frames. I like to use two hands. Okay. If I ever use one hand, it might be the case that Zach can sit and turn his body either way, and my, my hand starts to slide off. So I like to have two, so that I don't really have that issue. So the first thing you need to do is use those defensive hands, like so. That's your first defensive tool, it's just your frames, hand frames. If Zach, if I recognize that I need to be de defensive soon enough, and there's enough space, I use hand frames, where I can lock out my elbow and put an entirely straight arm here. If he comes in too tight, and my hand frames are getting bound up, and I, I have bent elbows, this is no good. If Zach were to take grips on my lapels, or, or you know, collar here, maybe my head here, and I start to try to push off here, it's going to be very, very hard to push. So when he gets in really tight, we tend to use elbow frames. But they really shouldn't get met this tight. You should be able to intercept him before that. So as he comes in, we're going to use hand frames. Another form of frame that I can use is using an inverted straight collar grip. What is that? Typically, when, we, when I tell you to grab either a straight collar grip or a cross collar grip, it's done with thumb up, either cross collar, thumb up here, or straight collar, thumb up here. But I'm going to tell you guys to use a thumb down or an inverted straight collar grip. So from here, I'm going to take a grip on the straight collar, and this is just another defensive tool, and I'm going to lock my elbow out. Okay? Now, when Zach tries to come in and get chest to chest, it's going to be very hard for him to go through this frame. I'm holding this D across his neck. So as he tries to come in, the, the collar keeps his head and neck away and maintains space for me for a while. Okay, so we have frames with the hands. We have the invert uh, straight collar grip. These are both good defensive tools. Another good defensive tool that I can use with my... Uh, actually, you know, I'm going to backpedal. I'll come back to that later. There is another defensive tool I can use with my hand. It's an underhook. If Zach starts coming in and I can fish an underhook, I can start coming into singles. And we'll get to this later. But that's going to be a little more complicated. Let's keep it simple for now. So that's how I use my hands for defense. Either hand frames or that inverted straight collar grip. Now the purpose of the frames is to keep enough space long enough for me to get my leg back inside. To keep enough space for long enough that I can get my left leg in. As he comes in, and I put my hand frame, my goal, let's rotate actually from here. My goal is to hold him off long enough that I can get my up knee inside. Here's a knee shield. That'd be one good thing. I can use a knee shield. Now if Zach tries to get in chest to chest, that knee keeps him away. Or if Zach's doing a good job keeping that knee out, and I can't get my knee underneath, I can go with the lasso, bringing my foot over the top. Now, you might think this uh, requires a crazy amount of flexibility, but it really doesn't. Your hands and feet should be set up that 95% of people out there should have no problem touching their hand to their foot, okay? Especially if they flare this knee open. If I keep my knee close to my chest, or closed in toward my center line so it comes into my chest, I won't be able to get this lasso in very well. But when I point my left knee over to my left, here, now I can get my foot a lot closer, and now I can get my foot and my leg in between my chest and his chest. Okay? So we initially throw up our immediate frames, whether it's two hands, 
or whether it's this inverted straight collar grip. And we use these frames to keep them up, um, up long enough for me to bring in either a lasso by bringing my foot in or a knee shield by bringing my knee in. Now, you can also use your knee by going over the top and putting an knee shield over the arm. That's permissible as well. But I find that it's not always the strongest because he can kind of force his elbow inside and then force that, um, that position, that knee and elbow connection again. So you can go knee inside. If I am going to go knee inside, I like to be active with it right away. He has this hand anchored, so if I just put the knee in, he can flare his elbow open and bump my knee back out. If I go here and I sort of use my knee to push, watch what happens to this grip. So it's to strip that grip, and now I have that space again, where now I can push, recover my bottom leg, and I recover the arm. So we have hand frames, we have inverted straight collar grips, and we've seen that those can help me set up lassos and knee shields, and these are all designed to keep them away. Another form of defensive tool that I can use is my underhook. So, there we go. As that comes into a split squat, maybe I'm putting up my fringe, but I see the, there's space between his elbow and his body. Another thing I can do here is I can shoot my left arm underneath his armpit, inside of his arm, and I can start to come up. Now from here, we got a couple options. In the gi, I can look to go into lapel single legs, like we looked at with our half guard series. Now from here, I get my grip on the inside knee, start to come up, and finish lapel singles. Or, if he's, he doesn't have a gi, I could throw in my underhook, go right here, and I'm going to scission my legs going belly down, and I can start to come up and wrestle. Okay, so that's another defensive tool, is the underhook, and we're going to look at that later. One more defensive tool to talk about is a reverse de la Hilo. Understand that when Zach comes in, let's go this angle. When Zach comes in for the split squat, he wants to keep his heel and his butt together. Okay, so I can't get anything underneath of his hips. And if he does this successfully, let's rotate here. And he puts his butt down. Now that I can't really hook this foot in. But if Zach is up and he starts coming in, and I prematurely I anticipate this knee cup, this split squat, as Zach comes in, go ahead, I can make a hook with my right leg, this inside leg, right here, putting my shin and my ankle between his calf and his hamstring, and I make a hook on the outside of his hip. Now when Zach comes in to do his knee cut, he can't get his butt to his heel. Okay? If you were to try to insist on the knee cut, he could continue to drive through, an extension of my right leg will force him out onto his hands, and it pushes his hips away. So, it's kind of difficult for, for Zach to deal with that reverse day of hook if he lets me hook it in. And that is our uh, last defensive tool that we're going to talk about. So we've got hand frames. Elbow frames if he's close, but typically we prefer hand frames if we can keep them at least one arm's length away. We've seen we have the thumb down, the inverted straight collar grip. The frames and the inverted straight collar grip hold him off long enough for me to get my leg defensive tools in, either a knee shield by getting the knee in, or I can get the foot in with a lasso. Then we also saw I can use my arms to come in an, an underhook as a another form of defensive tool. Okay. Or if we anticipate that split squat, he comes in, we see it early enough, we can lock in a reverse daily heave hook. So frames, inverted straight collar grip. Um, lassos and knee shields with the outside leg, lassos and knee shields, underhooks, and reverse daily heel hooks. Those are our defensive tools. Hand frames, inverted straight collar, lasso, knee shield, underhook, reverse daily heel hook. All of these defensive tools will buy us time. None of them by themselves will help us get a victory or sweep or do whatever. All they do is stop him from coming forward long enough for me to figure out how I want to attack from there. Whether I want to recover my guard simply or whether I want to try maybe a, a more advanced attacking technique from the split squad. But understand that none of your attacks are going to work and none of your guard retention is going to work if you don't first throw up some of those defensive tools. So the first thing you have to do against that split squad is mount some sort of defense. Realize that you are in a defensive cycle 
and mount a defense to stop their pass. Now, once we get those defensive tools in place, what do we do with them? Well, we've got a number of good options. Some are more conservative, just simply recovering our guard. Uh, and then others are a little more complex, so where I counterattack, and I can actually, from that position, knock him down. And then we have even, even more advanced stuff where I actually invert in underneath my partner and go into the legs. So let's start looking at some of these attacks. Okay. So, Zach comes into a split squat. First thing I do, I frame. I want to frame long enough to get my left leg in, either as a knee shield or as a lasso. Doesn't really matter. Now the first thing to do is just to simply recover guard. Okay, very easy. As I'm here, once I get my left leg in, everything's just, to, just going to extend and push away, and I recover my guard. Now this is the least desirable because it leaves us still in a defensive cycle. When I, I frame, knee shield in, I push away, and I'm here, I have no connection to Zach. And if you remember, when I have no connection, I consider him to be offensive because he has the mobility advantage. Okay, so that's, that's the simplest, the most conservative, the, the least desirable, but the easiest to do. So make that kind of your first option is just simply recover your guard. You're gonna work um, developing your skills, you're gonna get better options, but that's gonna be your first thing is just to simply recover your guard. Another way we can do this, let's say I'm here and you know maybe he's shutting out my lasso on my knee shield. I can't get a lasso and I can't get a knee shield in. How am I gonna recover guard here when I can't use my legs? I'm gonna come down to this inverted collar grip and an arm prop, okay? So, if I can't get my left leg in, he's doing a good job staying tight with his shoulder so I can't get the lasso in. He's doing a good job keeping that knee and that elbow and knee together so I can't get my knee shield in. I'm gonna take this thumb down, inverted straight collar grip, I'm gonna flare my right elbow up to my shoulder line and I'm gonna start to come up as I start to push him away. Now from here I can scoot back and recover my guard. Now we can either stay right here where I have no connection to him and I'm once again in a defensive cycle, or I can try to immediately establish four points of connection and now I'm into my offensive cycle where I can break his balance, putting hands to the floor and going into my attacks. That's your most conservative. Just push them out and uh, get back to guard. Next, we're going to look at another form of guard recovery. This time it's going to be a little bit better because as we recover our guard, we're going to set our grips so that we can go right into an offensive cycle. Uh, we're going to go one, into one of our favorite guards, the collar cuff bicep guard, which as you guys remember from the collar cuff bicep topic, out of all the different guards out there, if you're never sure which one to use, go back to collar cuff bicep. It's one of the best. Okay? So, I'm here, I'm framing, maybe I get in a lasso, or maybe I get in an e shield, it really doesn't matter. Now from here, from my frames, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start to establish a cross collar grip. I'm gonna open, feed in a cross collar grip with my top arm. Now, I'm gonna start to use my legs, either my knee shield or a lasso, whatever I use, whatever I have in, and I'm gonna start extending and making space. Now from here, I'm gonna start putting feet in the hips so I can make more space. So I make a little space as he's pressuring in, he's pressuring in, I push away and I get my foot in the hip. I may use a reverse daily heave hook to help me make space as well, we'll come back more to that later. My foot in the hip. Now from here I'm going to look to get a cuff grip as I bring my bottom leg out and put my second foot in the hip. Now all I have left to do is to take my left foot, put it in the bicep, and we have our collar cuff bicep guard. From the collar cuff bicep guard, as you guys remember, we pull our opponent down into submission attacks. Or if he pulls back and away from me, I can go into attacks that take him in a backward direction. <laughs> so, real quick, once again, he comes in. I frame, immediately I put in my defensive barriers. Stop him from coming through, I'm in a defensive cycle. I bring my lasso in. Now that I have my barriers, now I can start setting some grips to try to not only recover my guard, but recover my guard in a way that allows me to go right back into an offensive cycle. Recover my guard in a way that gives me four points of connection and puts me back in the best darn open guard we have, collar cuff bicep. So I'm going to open, cross collar, and I'm going to start using my legs in here to start pushing and creating space. As I do so, I'm going to grab this straight cuff grip here. My bottom leg goes into the hip. 
top leg goes into the bicep, and we have our collar cuff bicep guard. From here, you guys should know what to do. We got attack, so we can take our opponent up over the top. We're pulling forward into our attacks. Or if he pulls back and away, we have attacks where we come up, and we can sit him down. All right, that is arms. We've got the lassos, the knee shield. Let's start going into our Let's do single legs next. I think that makes the most sense. So from here, another thing Zach can do, you can come down and you can start working the split squat. Now, from here, rather than just trying to use frames and stay on my back and work from here, I can start to punch in underhooks and I can come up. So from here, I'm going to take my left arm into the underhook position. Okay, let's rotate. You see, I frame. I put my arm into the underhook position. And now my right elbow comes up to my shoulder line and I prop up to my elbow again like I've done before. Getting in tight. Okay, now from here my left arm is gonna wrap underneath to this leg. I initially, oftentimes will start with a, a tight waist. Um, and from here, if he stays down and heavy like this, I just start to come up into like a half guard position. A lot of times what will happen when I do this is people start standing up and pulling away. And as I do, as they do, do that, I can go down to my single leg. Now, without the key, we could hold it above the knee, get the ankle, and start to come up. Here, and start to come up. Now, if he stays up, we've seen what to do from here before. We go into a high single leg, and now we have either high amplitude finishes, where I take everything up to my collarbones and start to get him hopping on that leg, and then I sweep the leg out. I won't, I won't do it, but I'm right here, and I sweep that leg out. Otherwise, we have lower amplitude finishes, where I reach over the knee, wrist deep, grabbing the back of the tendons, back step, and I pull the knee open and down for our low amplitude finish. I have options where he comes in, I block, I punch in my underhook. Now, if he doesn't have the gi on, we're forced to work without the gi, I like to control in front of the knee. If I'm below the knee, Zach can turn and kick, and the leg will be gone. If I stay above the knee, he turns and kicks, my hand catches the knee and it holds me to him. That's no gi. Then from here I can hip heist, and come up and stand up with the leg. In the gi, however, we come up, we wrap. Even as he tries to drive in, let's say he's staying down here at the knee cut, I can work from down here even, down on his shoulder. It really doesn't matter. Now I can start to pull this lapel out, feed it in, and now we have our lapel single. You guys have seen what to do from here. I'm gonna grab the inside, uh, or grip just inside the knee, on the secondary leg and the far leg. I'm gonna scissor my legs going belly down, coming up, and now even as Zach comes up, stands up with me, the fact that I have both these legs means that when Zach goes to sprawl his way back and away, he sprawls on me. Sprawl, sprawl, sprawl. He can only sprawl so much. Even with very poor posture, Zach sprawls everything he has into me. I just pull that knee in as I walk, and I put it down. Okay, so that's our single legs and uh, lapel singles. A couple more options to go through here. Um, the cross tripod sweep. You guys all remember the tripod sweep, right? Zach stands up. I grab the same side ankle behind the knee and we put him down. We can hit a cross tripod sweep as well. Zach comes into a knee shield. This one requires me to put in a reverse day of the heel hook. Okay, so we're back to our reverse day of the heel hook. I'm framing as well. Now from here, as Zach tries to pressure, pressure in, I can use my reverse day of the heel hook to extend it and move him away enough to get my foot into the hip. Okay. So from here, I'm framing. Keeping him away, my foot goes to the hip. Now from here, my right hand, my bottom hand goes down, and I catch his ankle. Now from here, my reverse David Eagle hook comes out, and I catch behind this ankle. So my right hand has a near ankle, and I have a hook behind the far ankle, and I have a foot in the hip. So now all I need to do is press, and he goes down. Now remember, now we have a double seated position. I want to keep control of this ankle as we go to get up so he can't go to get up with me. So I actually like to pull him into a reverse daily heel of his own. So when I, when, from this position, I'm going to lean on my arms like a hand, and as I go to get up and Zach goes to get up, 
I keep this leg pulled in here, almost feel like I'm trying to force him into his own reverse daily heel hook. But that's fine. I don't mind if he accepts a reverse daily heel hook because that means I get the sweep. So then I come up, I can take the reverse daily heel hook out now, and now I'm working into my own split squat. Okay. One more time with the cross tripod sweep. He comes in, I put in a reverse daily heel hook immediately with my right leg. I anticipate him coming in, and before he's able to start to again, before he's able to connect his butt to his heel and shut me out, I'm going to put in this reverse daily heel hook. Now from here I go out. Now that I have him stopped, I'm going to put a foot in the hip and start to extend him away and I catch the ankle. Now from here, my right foot flips the far ankle as I push him down. Then I immediately rock over to the outside, hugging his foot to my hamstring. Now when Zach and I go to get up together, he's not going to be able to get up because I got this ankle. I, I notice how I extend and kick that daily heel hook off, that reverse daily heel hook. And now I've set up my own split squat and I'm ready to go in and get my guard passed. All right, now we're gonna go into a couple fancier options, okay? So, so far we've gotten just typical recover the guard, frame and push them away, or inverted collar dip and push them away. We've seen that when I push them away, it's even better if I can get up, if I can set the grips for my favorite guard, the collar cuff bicep. So I set my grips, then push them away, and now we're back in an offensive cycle. We, we can do that with either knee shields or lassos. Then we've seen that if he comes in. If he comes in and I anticipate it, I can go into an underhook. And from that underhook, I can go into single legs and lapel single legs. We've also seen that I can anticipate with a reverse daily heba hook. He comes into my reverse daily heba, and now I can go into my cross tripod sweep that we just learned. Let's look at a couple other options now that, that require inverting, in, either into the near leg or into the far leg. As that comes in, sets so up the split squat, I put in a reverse daily heba hook once again. Okay. okay, just a bit. Right. Now from here, I can invert into the near leg with a reverse daily heba inversion. Oftentimes people will refer to this move as the kiss of the dragon technique. I literally have no idea why. I think that's just a popular name that's stuck. Um, I call it a, a reverse daily heba inversion, or you could call it a near leg inversion as well. So I'm here, and we're, in the, we're working the split squat. My left arm stays up as a frame, and my right arm takes a scoop on the outside of the leg. So I bring my hand in between his ankle and my own butt, and I'm gonna hook elbow deep on his ankle. I wanna get the crook of my elbow to his ankle. As I'm doing that, I can't be naive and leave him open for a cross face. If I dig in under here, he comes in for a cross face and flatten me out, now we're gonna shut out. So as I'm working here, my left hand is close on the cross shoulder or on the cross bicep. Now if he goes to crush me, I have an elbow frame here. My elbow controls this shoulder, and my hand and wrist control this shoulder. So as he comes in, I can hold him off with just a single frame. That leaves my right hand available to go through and take my elbow deep grip. Now, from here, in order to get elbow deep, I'm going to have to pull my hips off the floor. So I tuck my chin in my chest, I pull my hips in, and I'm driving my knee inside of Zach's two legs. Okay. From here, I'm going to catch the far knee with my forearm, bring him forward, and we end up right here. Rotate toward the toward the logo side. We end up here with one foot on the inside and one on the outside. Now, all I like to do from here is I reach up and grab the belt. I pummel my outside leg to the inside, and now we have our baby bolo that we've worked in the past. I'm going to pull this hip down into my left as I pull my knees to my chest. And now my two legs extend and spread apart. They extend and spread. So you can do this well. Now I connect. And I go on the back. One more time with the reverse daily heave inversion. As he comes in, I catch my reverse daily heave hook and I frame. Now from here, keeping my good top arm frame, because I don't want to be naive and let him come in chest to chest. This frame has to stay strong. The right arm swims through. And I'm going to go initially wrist deep, and I'm going to pull myself to an inverted position so I can get elbow deep. So as Zach's trying to pressure in, I 
pull myself up, keeping my knees tight to my chest, and aiming my knee for between his two knees. Now from here, I'm gonna grab behind the knee, and I'm gonna pull myself in underneath of my opponent. Now from here, I grab the belt, book the swings inside, and we hit the baby bolo, finish. That's the near leg inversion. Let's look at the far leg inversion. From here, Zach comes in. But this time, maybe Zach is a little more naive and he doesn't hide that leg so far away. He keeps it a little too close. When it's close, I can reach it and access the leg. Zach wants to keep it further out if he knows what he's, he knows what he's doing and if he knows what's good for him, he doesn't want to give you that leg. But sometimes your partner is going to be a little more naive and they're going to bring that in. When I see this kind of thing going on, once again, I'm framing bringing legs inside, etc., keeping them away. Now I'm going to go into a scoop grip on this leg, and I bring my knee across his body. Now from here, I'm going to pull myself, once again, up into an inverted position, and now I can thread my legs around the far leg. If I continue to invert through now, I'll land in the cross ashigurami, and we're primed and ready for either inside heel hooks or come up and start working guard passes. Once again on the far leg inversion. He comes in, I'm framing. I try to bring in my knee shield, keep him away. As he pressures in, he's a little naive and he keeps his leg close. This could even happen because he's trying to drive forward and so that leg ends up coming in. Now from here, I'm gonna take my scoop grip on the far leg, connecting my hand, and now I'm gonna pull myself up to an inverted position. You have to use your legs to move your hips. Okay, it's kind of goofy to try to pull yourself up to an inverted position, but I'm gonna push off his body with my legs to move my hips. So I'm here, I push off his body to bring my hips up, and I come to this inverted position. Now from here, my left leg comes to the outside, so I have two of my legs surrounding Zach's single leg. Now from here, I'm just going to continue to invert through. I pull his leg out, and I sit him down. And now we have access across option ground, he inside the hooks, and all the good things from there. So that'll about do it for our uh, negating the split squat video. Once again, remember that you're initially in a defensive cycle. You need to frame and stop them from coming in and completing the pass. Use hand frames or that inverted collar frame. The frames hold them off long enough to get your leg inside, either a lasso or a knee shield, but it's always that outside leg. And from there, then you can make a choice. Do you want to recover guard, take a conservative route where you just kind of push them off you and recover your guard? Or do you want to try to counterattack? We've seen that we can push them off going into collar cuff bicep or just recovering your guard. Or we can counterattack with things like um, an underhook going into single legs either without the gi or with a lapel single.